Warning, caution, this is an over 18 podcast. If you're under age, if you're under the age of 18 and want some clear, precise instructions, information, and guides, go to scarletteen.com. Dude bros, bro dudes, yo, fuck off. Nerdy shit here. Somebody help that poor submissive. Look, up there in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane? Is that a flogger? Someone's gotta be having a good time. As the kink signal shines brightly in the night sky, we know that there is fuckery afoot. What kind of fucking town is this? No worries, as they've listened to the Gotham press beforehand, so all will be safe, sane, and consensual. Well, that's reassuring. Right? Yeah, but what's the Gotham press? What is the Gotham press, you ask? It's about time you tell us, don't you think? Well, I'll let the Cape Crusaders themselves educate you on that. Stop interrupting my scene! My god, that's a lot of lubricant. You are totally killing my headspace here! You are now listening to the world-famous Gotham Press Podcast. Hi! Welcome back, listeners! Hey! Hello! Hello, hello! Hi, everybody! No. So glad everybody came back! I am, too. I, I, I'm just... I'm tickled to be here today. I'll tickle you with my crop. <laughs> I totally misheard that. With yeah. the crop? Or well, my cock. Yeah, that's not what I heard. Oh. What did you hear, Greedy? Show me your wiener. <laughs> Ask me about <laughs> my wiener. I'm in the dark. It's okay. <laughs> I think it's because I... There are movies That's a fun place to be when you're asking me about my wiener. <laughs> yep. What did oh. you hear? Are you saying that you don't want people to actually see your wiener? I'm going to tickle you with my crotch. Oh, well, that works too. Uh, so hey, this could be fun. Greedy? Yes. I heard a voice that wasn't the usual. I have heard a voice that wasn't the usual a couple of times now. Who is that? Hi, guest. Well, hello, hello. Who uh, are you? Well, your yeah, fat name is J A R R, is a top Latino. Just call me Jar for short. Hi, Jar for short. Jar for Jar short. Jar for short. <laughs> Welcome, Jar for short. We could do that. Sweet. Oh my god. So yeah. Jar for short, that's awesome. Yes. Glad you're here. Yes. I'm capital J, capital A, capital R, capital R. For short. For short. In little lowercase. Correct. Of course, yeah. Oh, for short. Yes. I kind of yeah. want you to change your pet name to be Jar for short. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so Jar, what what brings you around today? What what how do we get you? Uh well, uh, you guys got me because it seems that we had a topic in regards towards bisexuality. Oh, don't worry. We will get to that. Uh, I think he's referring to our alph- alphabet soup series. Yeah. Alphabet soup it is. Yeah. We got to get we gotta take care of the nerdy stuff first, and then we'll got get there. It. Yeah. All right. So well, chime if in. you're okay with nerdy stuff, that is. Yes, of course. As you, as you wear a Scott Pilgrim <laughs> versus the World t-shirt. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. So now, what? Uh, so being that I'm still new to the alphabet soup series, uh, what season are we on and what episode? As far as the podcast in general, we are on season four, episode 30, 32, 32 I think. <laughs> 30, Something like that. 32, nice. yeah, 32, because the last one we went up was 31. But as far sure. as Alphabet Soup series, you are number two. Ooh. <gasps> Numero well, dos. dos. Well, you, you can't be second best, though. You can't nope. beat second best no. first? No. Well, huh. Here, look at it this way. <laughs> you are the first by mail that we have. Okay, so then I'm the first in regards towards by but i'm the second in the alphabet soup series yeah, nice correct right. nice uh, that is fun to have it that way hey greedy yo do we give a hello to everybody including our patreon supporters i think we need to give a hello to our patreon supporters hey there patreon supporters hi we always appreciate you if you want to become a patreon supporter of gotham press it can be done for simply a dollar a month yeah that's kind of a bargain I would say it's definitely a bargain. Yeah, it gets gets you fun perks like uh, getting shouted out on the uh, on the show. Um, get you so, access to our Discord. How do you donate to our Patreon? That's a good question. You simply go to the website patreon dot com slash Gotham Press Podcast. Thank you. That's brilliant. nice. Okay, great. All right, sweet. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, you can always call us or text us at eight zero five three zero three one one seven three. Thank you, Micromanager. I appreciate you <laughs> mouthing the number to me. <laughs> I know you know the number. Well, I was excited that I knew the number. <laughs> oh my God, you did. I did. I just looked it up. For that's someone why. that's still new, can I get that number one more time? 805-303-1173. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, Jar. Yes. Do me a solid. Yes. Black or white? White. White. Okay. 
Okay, okay. I'm, Brie, I'm, do you not have the cards with you at, at the uh, recording? I do not. I do not. He's walking away <laughs> as we're recording, walking away across the room. No. So, you should have that crop ready when he returns. Oh, damn it. It's right here. It is. Your crop is literally right next to you. Come. Get back. Back in your seat. So. All righty. Now, what am I doing with uh, this l- beloved white card? Do you know the game Cards Against Humanity? I do, but can you give me a quick uh, reference again? Okay, so in Cards Against Humanity, the black cards are the cards that are drawn and read aloud, and they're fill-in-a-blank style cards. The white cards are the answer cards. So Perfect. Things, a uh, black card example would be something that the Virgin Mary always reminisced about was blank. And then the white card that would be most appropriate for that would be the lingering taste of God's semen. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. it wasn't a mistake, though. She was a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, semantics. Um, anyway, so you have the uh, duration of the show to figure out something that you would like to fill in on that white card and then Perfect. submit to the end. Nice. Alrighty. So, awesome. Yes. Did you hear that... Somebody is planning a raid on Area 51. I've heard many people oh. are trying to do this. And I'm just waiting for the news the day of that. Dawson said they went to raid Area 51. Nothing happened. Yet they have not been heard from ever again. Actually, now there was a recent saying. Now, quote me if I'm wrong, if you can find that information. But they were saying something online that the gentleman that made that remark in regards towards storming Area 51 to clap the Malian cheeks, if I'm mistaken. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that he made that as a joke, but he got, I believe it was anywhere between like 3.1 to 3.2 million people saying that they were down for it. Now, he just claims that he was from Bakersfield College and it was just meant as a joke, but he recently got people like totally like into it, like down to like do something about it. He then changed it to, oh, well, I'm just going to just play some music on the outside of the Area 51 and just chill. So that that is accurate. The The guy that made this whole thing up is a, a resident of our hometown, <laughs> the oh. Bakersfield. No, Ooh, not your wow. hometown. Oh, <laughs> the, yes. the, the three of us, our hometown. Yes. Um, he is a student at Bakersfield College, and his claim is, yeah, it was, it was meant as a joke, but... Um, Almost every hotel in the area of Area 51 has been sold out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've checked a few of them. Uh, checked Expedia. Checked a couple of uh, fun little sites trying to find Trivago. hotel rooms. Yeah. Expedia, Airbnb, everything in that area is fucking booked. Nice. So, yeah, this this might actually come to fruition. This This may happen. And what was that? On like the 20th of some sort? September 20th. Uh, September 20th. Yep. So yeah, um, he's saying that yeah, it was it was all meant as a joke, and uh, <laughs> personally, I think the uh, the feds got to him, you know. Probably. So. Well, he did mention that on the the news for twenty three channel, it was something about like he was waiting for the feds to get a hold of him, but uh-huh. nothing's nothing's come up yet. He's still waiting. Uh, he's still in the books. That's yeah, the they official would, word. That's the official word. They yeah. would tell him if you tell anybody, we will kill you. I thought that was the CIA. Uh, yeah, <laughs> CIA, FBI, one of those alphabet organizations that have names, but only by letters and nobody really knows what they do or who they are. Got it. It was one of those groups. Um, that's that's my speculation anyway. True, true. So, yeah, the claim is that it was all a joke. And now he's trying to pawn it off as we're doing another uh, essentially Coachella Music and Arts Festival. You know, he's trying to get bands to come in and uh, artists and food trucks and all this other shit that it's going to get out of control very quickly and i i would be willing to bet somebody is going to die uh i i I believe that as well but going on to the subject that it's it was meant to be a joke there's an associated meme with it as well about the naruto run where you can (laughs) where you can run in a naruto style fashion with your arms like behind you and you'll be able to outrun bullets that's oh what we call God. stupidity. Oh, so but... they're going to look like a bunch of like velociraptors or chickens. Like... <laughs> kind of. As they ridiculous. get mowed down by the U.S. military. Yeah, but you can't forget about the Kyles and the two cans of uh, monster that they have to have. So <laughs> <laughs> so you got you to gotta, you gotta keep it out there for the Kyles, too. Uh, I can't wait to see the Damn It Carl memes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Damn it, Carl. Damn it, Carl. <sighs> Carl? 
That's that stupidity. Kills people, Carl. We're off yeah, the someone County suggested Mountain, Carl. naming. Nobody likes raw face. Was that? Someone suggested naming my llama Carl. <laughs> yes. No. We need to get him a hat if we're going to do that. I know, and I don't. I don't want. You don't want Carl. You don't want your llama to kill people. Car- yeah, maybe he could be the other one that always Paul? tells Carl. No, Carl, that That's kills Paul. people. Yeah. yeah. We don't. Oh. I mean, we, we don't. <laughs> no, we need a better name. I, I am still partial to Charlie. La La Lama. La La Lama. I know, but I am the only Lala. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we we can't we can't have the llama taking Lala's good name. I do have a list of names, but I oh. need more. I need more names. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like the L names because then we could double L it like llama. Okay, I got you. Luke, Larry, Lori, Liz, Lily. Those are the ones I have Lilies. so far that are L's. Logan. Oh, Logan. Logan llama. So anyway. Lala is still picking a name. So if you have a submission for that, please send it to us. Yes, please. Uh, oh, so ha- have we covered Area 51 at this point? I think we've just about covered Area 51 at this point. <laughs> you can't, can't forget the Kyles. Mm. <laughs> the Kyles. <laughs> mm. So watching the, watching the media for Maddie, the, the dude that allegedly put this all together. And uh, let's, let's see how long he stays out of jail. Uh, Not out of jail. Let's see how long he stays alive. There you go. Yeah. So, I, I think someone's going to get trampled, especially if they're going to do that. The stupid run? That chicken run. <laughs> Velociraptor run. I don't know. I just, I picture it like wings back and heads forward. Like, I don't know how well, that's going to accomplish anything. So you're, you're putting your body closer to, if you're standing straight forward, straight back, you're tilting your, pretty much anything above your waist, you're tilting it forward until you get to a 45 degree angle. And then you're actually going to stick your arms close to a, the opposite 45 degree angle. So you're looking like an entire like Z of some sort and you're just face forward that's, running down. That's ridiculous. It is. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's anime. It's so ridiculous. I want to move on. All right, moving okay. on. So mm. still keeping in the nerdy realm. Have you, any of you ever gone to a GameStop store? Yes. God, Recently, I hate that place. Yes. Recently. It's yes. lame. Recently. Well, GameStop is talking about uh, creating a new store concept, retro gaming. Oh God! Which is now they're trying to to glamorize bringing back your Nintendo Entertainment System. Not exactly. What's happening is with technology moving as quickly as it can, and everybody downloading their games instead of buying the physical copies. Uh huh. That's cutting into the revenue. Oh no shit! I believe it. They lost like one point two. No, ah, I gotta get the exact numbers. They lost a lot of money. And because of this, they're trying to think of a way to compensate for that. So they're going to be changing some of their stores to be retro gaming centers. Oh, like like uh, putting in consoles and renting out time? Yeah, like consoles, arcades, things like that. That is not a new concept. That is not. It is not. But it's something that some people, younger people, would have no clue of. Mm. Well, so the number you were looking for third quarter last year, they lost over half a billion dollars, half a billion dollars. Mm, well, that was their report. Yeah. Now, going back onto the subject with Captain on hand, um, there used to be a place in our hometown. Um, it's called the East Hills Mall. They actually had a game stop <laughs> that they did that no, way back uh, in the day. Game store. It was game. Wasn't a game. It was game store. store. OK. Yeah. Because uh, game store Gill. I, I know the guy. He's yes. Yeah, that that guy that guy was actually pretty cool. Uh, small town business thing, you know. He had uh, three stores around town. Uh, they've since gone the way of the dodo. But Game Store Gill was fucking awesome. Yeah, because I used to remember that they used to do the Smash Brother tournaments in the game store uh, in the yep. in, in the game store uh, or the GameStop or whatever it was. Game store. And, and then they actually did the um, the Halo tournaments back in the day as well. I competed in those. I actually got. Uh, what is it, like 15 out of like the 20 some odd people that were in town, like the groups of three? What? Nice. Well, I crushed, for everybody that can't see. I crushed first place four times in those competitions. Nice. I, I, I was pretty badass at Halo. Yeah, that, that, was, that, was my, that was my jam. It was, it was fucking awesome. And then, of course, people. I grew up on uh, tribes and Command and Conquer, and I, I had a good idea of. Uh, uh, strategies and I was pretty good at first person shooters. So, nice. and then you left Bakersfield and found out, man, there's so many people. So out much there. more. Yeah, but anyway. But why do they? Why do they think that they're coming up with this new concept when it's been around for 
since the 80s. They really. they think, well, I wouldn't say they think they're coming up with a new concept. What they're thinking is if people aren't coming to buy our games, let's let them just play the games. The old games, those nostalgic games that they can't really find many places. Unless, you know, they're nerdy and they get an emulator and they have access to all these things. I personally prefer Nesticle for uh, my NES games. Yeah. Raspberry. Raspberry, yes. Mm-hmm. But the more important thing is, yes, you can play those on whatever you have available, but you don't necessarily get the, you know, couch co-op, you know, that mm-hmm. originally came along with those games. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think they're grasping at straws. Um, game stores in general, with, with all the all the games going uh, toward DLCs, it's it's going to be a thing of the past. They're, they're going to be blockbuster of this generation. Isn't there a shop in town that rents out game time and stuff like that? Uh, bah, bah. That's like part of what they do. They mostly do like tabletop gaming and stuff. Uh, autos, I believe. Autos, yeah. Autos, yeah. autos video games and more. Yeah. They, they do that. They have a series of uh, consoles and PCs in their back room that you can rent time at. So Autos is going to be one of those shops that survives because they've already got the diversification that they need. That business model has to have other stuff. If you're just focusing on renting out uh, PC time or console time, you're going to die. Mm, I don't know if that's 100% true. Why? Have you ever heard of a game called... Wow, why am I blanking on this name? I haven't heard of that one. No, I haven't. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, fuck both of you. Fuck both of you very well. Uh, sandpaper dildo. Uh, for you. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so what's uh, the name of the game? Star... Starcraft? Wars? Starcraft. Thank you. Starcraft, yeah. yeah. Thank you. If you go other places in the world, there are video game cafes that are specifically for that. And yep. things like that, and they do very well. Yeah, but you're you're talking about places that still idolize uh, those those games, StarCraft, um, Command and Conquer. Are you saying StarCraft uh, is not idolized in America? No, no, but not to the not to the uh, extent. extent that mm-hmm. it is in the UK, okay. in, in Europe, Korea. Yeah, <laughs> no, a lot Korea, of Korea. They're South Korea. <sighs> okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to specify South Korea. Capitalist <laughs> pigs. Uh, <laughs> wow <laughs> and this is when this is the episode when we find out greedy is a communist yay uh, wow if if that were any more false i i yeah let's uh it's okay come okay on. have we beat this one to the ground i mean i think we've beaten it to the yeah. ground. i think we have right. but the next one is one that i found and i'm kind of interested in this high schools high schools are not the greatest place to learn about sex Okay. Like, the teachers don't, don't teach it well, to my experience. When you were in high school, did the teachers, like... I wasn't allowed to go to sex ed. You weren't allowed to go to sex ed? No. I did. Okay, same How, here. Uh, yeah. You weren't allowed? No, I, w- I was allowed. Okay, you were allowed. Yeah. And did you find that it was a good place to learn about it? That they actually taught you something that you couldn't find somewhere else in the world? See, now, with all honesty, at this time, when they actually offered it to most of us, it was sophomore year... And, of course, already having porn at this time. Dial up. Uh, <laughs> hey, you waited those three hours. Don't download, judge me. Yes. Download at night while mom's asleep. asleep. Hopefully, you get through that download without <laughs> anybody picking up the phone line. True. Mm-hmm. But usually, you unplug the phone line just to make sure that everything's okay. Uh-huh. So, yeah. But, no. Uh, w- uh, pretty much watching porn, doing all that shenanigans at the age of, like, 13. When they started telling you about, like, oh, safe sex. Well, what's so safe about it if you only still have this percent that can actually cause a condom to break? Or there's not actual lubricants or anything out there yet that's made to, like, help protect. Um, And then, like, the cups. What woman is really going to want to insert a cup? Um, I haven't come across one yet that felt that it was necessary for them to be secure all around condom cup and... It's it's useless, useless, useless as far as high school knowledge. Yes. Okay. I was like, and it's not all useless. It's just useless at that point. I'm just gonna speculate because I don't know how old you are, but I'm gonna say I'm probably a good 10, 15 years older than you. Twenty nine. Yes, we're gonna stick with that. <laughs> um, so, so when I had sex ed, we we did have computers, but it wasn't there wasn't one in every home. Right. Um. Yet. 
So Oh, back in the Tandy days? Back in the Tandy days. God, I remember those days. So we had a great sex education class, all the reproductive stuff, all the how to do it, all that stuff, plus how to put a condom on with a banana. On a banana. I was say you did you learn on the banana? We did. Yeah. So and but then after from what I hear, after our class went through, then it was all about teaching abstinence. Which is ridiculous, uh, but that's yeah. another story. We do. We here at the Gotham Press do not endorse teaching abstinence to no. kids. No. Nope. But the it reason I bring the story up in the first place is apparently there's a high school. I believe it's in uh, Madison, Madison, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. that is taking a different approach to this. They are actually going to be providing students with condoms. But to actually get said condoms, they have to partake in sex education. Right. It's like, hey, we'll give you these condoms to go do the things that you're going to do anyway. But we're going to teach you how to be safe about it before we give you these things. Hmm. What I really like, because I read this article, what I really liked is that they're going to teach about sexual consent. Consent, yes. Oh, it's about time. Uh And they're, they're trying to make it common language just to talk about sex so that it de uh, stigmatizes sexual conversations well, and that's that's one of the things that uh, awesome and i talked about on mm-hmm. a uh, previous podcast um there's uh, another country that does uh, that starts sex ed in kindergarten and it's not it's not this is a penis this is a vagina this goes in there it's this is how you consent to things and they they don't they don't use grown-up terms they use child terms do you want that child to have your cookie Mm -hmm. okay do you want do you want to share your your uh snack with them no okay he said no that's it that's the end of it she said no and it's okay to say no it's okay to say no you know they they start out early and teach them things the the fundamentals of consent and what will eventually become sex you know, uh, and it's yes, cookies lead to sex. Cookies lead to sex. Yes. <laughs> Come to the dark side. We have cookies <laughs> <laughs> and coffee. So you have oh, coffee. So you have sex. OK, cool. I want sex. Where, where, where's the sex? After kindergarten. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, the name I, I, I like the name of the program, but they definitely need to change it. What's that? The condom availability program cap we're gonna we're gonna give oh, you you're gonna cap. cap it yeah you're gonna cap it <laughs> that's uh, bad i just uh, picture a little beanie being put on top yeah of penis. yeah I, I i see i see some <laughs> high schooler just putting it on the tip and playing just the tip and then suddenly condoms off inside her and oh my god sensation overload oh pregnant. and then nine months later pregnant. or yeah your program didn't work or an std <laughs> Oh, yeah, or an STD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're going to be teaching about that, too, about sexual safety. Good. Which is amazing. And testing, getting tested regularly. Yes, that yes. is very important. So important. Always get tested between partners. It's the safest bet. Agreed. Yeah. Definitely agreed. I think it's a great idea. And in the, in the article, they actually say they're not the first school to do it, but they just feel like now... Now they need to jump on the bandwagon. They need to make and, sure that other other places know that this is a thing that can happen. Right. That should happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. And especially that they're going so public with it to yes. hopefully get other schools to feel good about doing it as well. Yeah. Making it normal. Because the whole concepts, even growing up, it's the concepts of sex is a taboo. Talking about it's a taboo. It's It's not something that should be announced in public. Or if not, towards your people. Yeah. Basically, just don't be a dumbass when it comes to sex. <laughs> Kids, learn about sex before you even think about doing it. Did, what? Consent is key. Did, 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 did you just say the word? Dumbass? Of the day? I don't think, I he, don't think that's the word. Oh. He did not say that word. He, he said something similar to well, the word. Since, oh. since, since you're now on the well, subject. Although, wait, are we done? Are you feeling... Are, do you I think, I think we done? covered that. Yeah, okay. right. cool. I, I think we capped it off. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, glove that bad boy. <laughs> yes. If the glove does not fit, don't fuck her. Don't go in. Um, <laughs> we need well, to return to that after the word because I have... A situation that happened to me when I was well. Here. Oh, 
Agreed. Noted. Let's bring it back around. Kiss okay. ass. Um, <laughs> so are. the word of the day is domass. Domass. D O M A S S. Lala, do you know what domass means? I'm assuming it's a dominant who's an ass. <gasps> it really is that simple. Actually, oh. there's that too. Yes, but it's also a person that believes that I am King Dominant. You High will listen Domly to Dom. me. Yes, the Domly Doms. You know, puffing out their chests right. and demanding that every female bow before them before they come into the dungeon that they don't own. Nope, I don't know you, don't get my respect. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> if you run into somebody out like this out in the wild, you will look at them and say, <laughs> dumbass, and walk away. Walk away. Because dumbasses can sometimes be dangerous if you assault their delicate sensibilities. <laughs> mm-hmm. With in my case, I I am a submissive. Okay, technically I'm a switch, but I am a su- submissive to my mistress. If I encounter a dumbass in the wild, <laughs> in the wild, yeah, I have I have standing permission to put them in their place. So, and how would you go about that? Well, it really depends on how they treat me. Oh. If they tell me that I have to kneel at them, or tell me that I'm less than anybody else because I'm not a dominant and I have a penis. Hmm. Then um, but, it's Brady, not going you have to be a so penis? polite. Yes. <gasps> what? How would we ever have known this? You've seen it. You have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe you may have actually seen it last night while I was playing with my mistress. No? Were you not in there? I was, and you were turned around, so I didn't see it. Either. I'm like, I don't remember. I was, I was stripped down, like standing in front of everybody. Probably. It was mildly humiliating, but oh, you know, I you'll be that okay. Part, darn it. Yeah. What a bummer. Oh. Anywho, um, basically, it's it's going to be, yeah, who the fuck are you to tell me what I can and cannot do? I am not owned by you. Go suck your proverbial dick. Nice. I like it. Eh. If, Keep if it you simple. don't have one, that, if you can't reach your own, there are plenty you can go buy and go suck those. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'll give you a magnifying glass and tweezers to help you find it if you need it. <laughs> Dang. You are so kind. <laughs> just a helping hand, just a helping hand. Uh, I've seen clitoris is bigger than that. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> You've not seen mine. I have not seen. Thank yours. you very much. <laughs> so, listeners, once more, the word for this episode is dumbass. 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 So, uh, you said you wanted to add something else to the last topic, right? Okay. So, someone said something about the condom not fitting. If it doesn't fit, don't fuck her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I had a little uh, a soiree with a gentleman who had a very not so large penis and mm-hmm. uh, didn't really feel anything, but I faked it the best I could. Oh, but when way he to was, go, trooper! Right when he was done, he pulled out, but the condom stayed inside me. Oh, that was the weird. I had never experienced anything like that before. It was the weirdest, awkwardest thing ever. You went fishing after. I didn't have to go fishing because... Like it was dangling? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like, because it, it was too, too wide, big. girthy uh-huh. wide too and girthy too wide long and... for his pinky. Oh. We'll just call oh, it a pinky. For his pinky. Oh. It was bad. It was bad. Do I know this person? No. Okay. Nope. Okay. No. Good. This was a long time ago. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> and then I had to avoid him because I didn't ever want to go through that again. Well, what you do is you... Do the kind thing. You buy appropriately sized condoms for him and say, use these in the future. Oh, well, no, he, buy, he buy latex them. gloves and clip the right. pinky off. Oh. <laughs> and just roll it. Just roll it. <laughs> roll that shit. That's me and Greedy. Right. I know. Don't they have technically like finger gloves that you uh-huh. can actually purchase if you're they a do. cook? They do. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they sell them at uh, Spencer's as a gag gift. Delicious. Oh. Flavored? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Vienna sausage. Oh. <sighs> okay, well, that was my story. So, so on to the next thing? On to the next. My God, we are sucking at our, our transitions today. This, this, hey, uh, hey, hey, hey. We are not sucking our transitions. Our transitions are exactly what they need to be for today. True. <laughs> so, Awesome, is it true you recently messed up a scene? I did. What did I, you mess up? So I had a scene last night and we talked it out 
the it was a co-topping scene. The first yeah. portion of the scene with the other top went spectacularly. Everything was fine, you know, happiness was had, and then it got to my portion. The first portion of the scene was a rope was a rope scene. And so she got tied up, you know. The other top he did very well the whole time. Checked in on her, made sure everything went perfect. So then it got to the portion that I was going to do, which is going to be the impact portion. Mm-hmm. Now, prior to this, we had talked. All three of us sat and talked. She had made mention that she wanted me to go a bit lighter than usual. Okay. And fine. I agree to that. That's no problem. In the excitement of the moment, I ended up not going as softly as I should have. Ah. Uh. And because of this, along with this, we were also using a toy that neither of us had actually used before. It was a spiked paddle. And the how we had gone about it before, how we had said we were going to go about it, was it was supposed to be used last and as a sensation tool more than an impact tool. Okay. What I did in my fervor, I picked it up not as a last, but somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. And initially I was just kind of like teasing with it a little bit, you know. I would, you know, rub it up against and then switch out to one of my other toys and actually hit her with that. Yeah. And then at a point, I did actually hit her with the spike valve. I didn't believe that I had hit her that hard, but apparently with that, it does not take much. Okay. And I saw the aftermath almost immediately. Like, oh, she's bleeding. Whoa. Yeah. So at that point, I immediately called the scene. Hey, we're, we're done. You know, I cleaned her up as best I could right there. She had been tied to the cross, so I untied her. Um, cleaned her up again. You know, set the torch aside, sprayed it down with a uh, mat aside to, you know, do what could be done real quick. Okay. It, it, it's her toy now. Okay. It's her toy now. Good, good. Yeah. But, you know, I still spray, spraying it down right then and there to do what I could. Um... And, yeah, she was not happy about that. I bet. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed for her. That sucks. I'm bummed for her as well. That was, and it was completely my fault. Hmm. But you guys talked it out, correct? Afterwards, you we guys we did talk about afterwards. Um, at this point, it's a, it's been settled that she's not going to be playing with me in the future, and I understand that. Oh. oh. And again, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, it was my fault. Well, to to whoever it was, if they're a listener, I I hope they, I hope they understand that it wasn't intentional and that you're, you know, doing what you can to make and it she, right. And we talked about it. She understood that it wasn't intentional, but it's still a matter of the fact that it happened. That it happened, and that we had talked about it beforehand. Yeah. And that's my fault because I instead of falling back on, hey, make sure that I thought about all this beforehand. It's like, hey, I'm in the mo I'm in the moment. I'm gonna do this because it'll be fun. Yeah. And suddenly yeah. it wasn't fun. Well I, I I don't know what else what else I can say. I mean that that sucks that it happened. That's awesome that you're owning it. Um always own your own shit. But, you know, learn from it. That's the only other thing you can do. That's what I'm trying to do is just I've been in my head a lot about that. So I figured I'd talk about it on the podcast to get it out there to the world. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, listeners, if you have any similar stories about scenes going wrong or even a comment about something like this happening, please go ahead and contact us and let us know your story. I'm really glad that you talked to her right away afterwards because if you if you hadn't, then I think maybe... Things would have gotten worse. It would have gotten worse because it could have shown that you didn't care you're the big tom, dom you can do what you want you know but you guys can remain friends now and and still communicate and yes and hang out and i i think that's really that's really good i try it's big of you very yeah. big of you and then aftercare is always a good thing for those situations because you actually took it upon yourself to make sure that she was okay so yeah well what actually happened was we got i got her all cleaned up got her out and in the main throw of things, got my stuff put away. And then she's like, hey, can we talk? Because I wasn't going to force that conversation on her if she wasn't in the mood to talk. Mm-hmm. You know? But she said, hey, can we talk? And I was immediately like, yes, let's let's go. Let's talk. Yeah, good. 
I think that's the way it needs to be handled. Talk right away. Don't wait till the next day or five days later. Yeah. Well, and don't I, do it in an email. Well, what I would say is this. As far as the talk is concerned, talk once everyone is ready to talk. If somebody is not ready to talk in that moment, don't force that conversation. Because then, think, because then you're not in the right mindset to either listen or say what needs to be said to move forward. Yeah, I get that also. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my uh, that's my story from the last play party I did. <laughs> Fun times, indeed. Well, everybody makes mistakes, and you'll learn from your mistake. That will never ever happen again. I am still that. That's the important thing, listeners. You're still everybody is still learning. No matter how long somebody's been in the lifestyle, mm-hmm. every time's a new experience. Every time's a learning experience. That is right. And maybe when she calms down, and some time has gone by, she'll. You'll be able to regain that trust. I'm not going to force the issue. I'm not going to push the issue. Is if it happens, great. If not, I understand why not. Yeah, yeah, so. that's good. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jar, Bonjour. For sure. I think it is your time. Your time to shine. Oh, really? We Topics have on me. I feel so. I don't know. Flustered. <laughs> <laughs> We have reached the alphabet soup portion of this episode. Well, well, well. So, Jar. Yes. You said before that you are a bi male, yes? Yes, I am a bisexual cis male. Bisexual cis male. Okay. Well, when you were coming up and you started getting into your own sexuality, when did you realize your preferences? The preferences wasn't actually a thing until I realized that I can actually have feelings for both male and female. Um, So... The, the the fun aspect or the play aspect uh, just happened to be on one time where the the one time where it was me, a friend, and a girlfriend. Not per se, we were dating, but a girl who happened to be a friend. Yes. And so it was interesting because he kind of did some things to me. I kind of did some things to her. We kind of did some things together, both males. And hey... Shit happens. Well, you don't want shit to happen there. Well, it happens sometimes. <laughs> it does happen sometimes. Mm-hmm. Just make sure you're, you're ready to clean up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a learning experience. Uh, that was another learning experience there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. So, as far as being bi, you're out to friends, you're out to family? Yes, I'm actually out everywhere. Uh, my friends know. Uh, my family seem to be more hesitant on the idea of me being bisexual. Uh, growing up, me letting them know, hey, I feel that something's odd. I kind of have attraction to both men, uh, male and female. Wait, did you say you told them something's odd? Yeah. Like, so growing up and just playing with both male and female, well, at the, this time, boys and girls, you kind of go about figuring out that there's something not okay because you see that men are dating women and women are dating men. There's no idea that, like, a man can be with a woman and a male. So, growing up at the age of, like, 15, I told my mom, or 14, I told my mom, I was like, hey, like, I kind of like girls, I kind of like guys, like, what seems to be the issue? And she's like, oh, it's a phase, you'll get over it. 15 happens. Hey, still kind of have this phase that I'm going through, I don't know what's going on. Come to a realization that it can be a thing. There is something called bisexuality. And I was like, all right, cool, I'm bisexual. I know that I'm bisexual. I'm totally okay with it. 16 comes around. They, ne- uh, they they neglect the idea that I am bisexual and I get booted out of the house. So, oh, no. Yeah. So being 16, um, accused of abuse, uh, not sexually, but like abusing a, a younger sibling on top of me being bisexual, not being a, a whole Christian or Catholic in that actual household, um, not abiding by my parents' rules. And they're just like, we're not having this. We're going to just go ahead and let you go. Well, when they realized that, hey, I wasn't the issue when it came to the actual physical abuse of, like, the younger siblings, they kind of realized that they kind of done screwed up. And here you go looking for a 16-year-old who's couch surfing with tons of friends at this time. And they can come to realize that, hey, you are bisexual. We don't care who you date. Just don't bring them home. Keep it that simple. <laughs> we don't Do want to not know. flaunt it in front of us that you yeah. are happy in a relationship. With a man or a woman. We don't care. Wow, so they want you bringing anyone home. No, no one. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. Even to this day? Well, no, to the, to this day, I'm actually, I'm supporting myself. I have my own place. I have my own rules, my own set regulations. Uh, I have a couple of partners and I have a couple of play partners on the side. Um, no, I get to bring whoever and w at whatever time I want. Like there is no rules, regulations. No one's going to hold me down. Just don't bring them home to family dinner. Oh no. If, if they're going to want to hang out with me and my parents, um, they kind of got to go through that whole, like, well, my mom has to get to know you first. And then if we're going to have an event where it's like a family dinner or a soiree at a restaurant, they got to be introduced slowly. If they're going to be a partner uh for life or if not a partner for that time and then they'll see if they're welcome to come and join us as a family mm. hmm. any questions from you oh i have questions go for it um do you have a preference as far as ginger, ginger? not ginger <laughs> gingers do you like Gin gingers gingers are cool yeah I, they're soulless i like gingers, I like gingers. <laughs> um but how about gender uh as in regards towards genders um yeah i so when it comes to genders the idea of me being in a relationship with a female is more to my liking, but having to be able to play more often with a male at, at my leisure, it would be more suggested. So it's like me having a relationship with a woman, them knowing that I'm bisexual, I am open, um, and then being able to go and play on the side with the male. So boy toys are always welcome. Uh, chubby, preferable. Aww, <laughs> that's cute. Would Here's you, your chance, awesome. <laughs> mm, I'm good, sir. Would you date a trans person? Um, with trans, it's a simple yeah, I would. Um, being that they associate with that sexuality, I don't judge off of what they have in between their legs. It's just more of what they prefer to be known as. Cool. Sounds like a good move. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to understand that there's a lot of terminology nowadays that when it comes to like being able to talk about that, you got to go to the source directly, hear it from the horse's mouth type of deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me personally, yes, I would date someone that is trans because they do associate as that specific gender. And it's kind of better to just leave it at that. Understood. All right. So how does being bi actually affect your dating pool? Oh, like, uh, like, does it make you more likely or less likely to actually get a date? Well, when it comes to the actual dating aspect of it, uh, being a bisexual male, it's kind of the first thing that you want to bring up like on date one or day two. Um, because if they know, they're more, they, they get an idea of what you are instead of like what you're intending to do with them. It's kind of hard being a bisexual cis male uh, because women that are predominantly straight, just male, female relationship, very mm -hmm. heterosexual, uh, they feel that it's kind of disgusting the, disgusting that i personally like to do and play with other penises um and this is from word of mouth talking to the last partners that i've had um and they're kind of just like we don't feel that it's right because we feel that you're cheating on us every time like a guy comes through someone's walking by you you tend to google it's like no quick question go for it um just from personal you are polyamorous yes i've recently come across polyamory yes i have okay so in your previous relationships, you were not polyamorous? No, I was very monogamous. Um, I was with a female. Uh, she was with me. It was simply we were together. Um, before that, I had a male partner um, who, by all means, was kind of what I was looking for in regards towards traits. Chubby, colored eyes, short, a little bit on the bigger side. Um, and you heard wide, it here first, listeners. Yeah. If you're like that. Jar's looking for you. Right? Wide <laughs> hips, thick thighs, big old butt. And it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of nice. It was like I wouldn't lie, but then a year and a half goes by. Seems that the relationship wasn't seemed to work out. Left that, went to the female side. I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and date a female at this time. Same concept. Bigger thighs, bigger hips, big butt. Um, and it was like not much of a change for me because it was like, hey, I get to put my dick in something. I don't care. Uh, so <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. With, please continue with that. No, but that's where it's at. And then, um, then at the same time, it's like emotions get involved. You date people, you break up, and you move on. So I lo I still have one of them as a good friend, so I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, so 
bi females are usually considered the unicorns. Oh, they're 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 viewed as the Messiah of Messiahs. <laughs> they'll go ahead and go make out with their gay girlfriends, and they'll go ahead and have threesomes with you and other women. But within all reality, that's not a lot of the case. Being that I have a lot of bisexual female friends, they're just like, no, I kind of prefer to have the female anatomy mm-hmm. uh, more than the female anatomy. And it seems that it's kind of controversial that it's like, oh. I'm a little drunk. I'm going to go ahead and make out with your girlfriends. Like, no, <laughs> doesn't happen. Too mm. much porn, guys. Too much porn. <laughs> I was going to ask, as far as being a bi male, are you considered a unicorn in a relationship, in any relationships? Not until recently. Um, I've always viewed myself as pretty much a simple down to earth guy. Um, a lot of women viewed me as in like, Oh, well you're kind of like nothing too special. Uh, the second they hear that I'm bisexual, they kind of just, about face walk away ignore the conversation and just move on with their lives recently i've come across two partners being that i just recently got into polyamory i came across two partners uh who both kind of fetishize it might be the wrong terminology but they kind of like like the idea that i'm bisexual and i get to play with other men as long as they watch they are totally okay with it which hey I'm okay with that 100%. It does not bother me one at, one at all. Okay. All right. All right. Any questions from either of you at this point? I think you guys have pretty well covered it. That that I don't know. Well, we have some more questions, but mm-hmm. I was just No, you you covered my questions. I'm, I'm not saying I'll... you covered everything. <laughs> I'm saying you covered my questions very well. Yeah. All right. All right. So, moving next on the list here. Um why is it a stepping stone for individuals to come out as bi, but then later come out as gay or lesbian? Do you have any opinions on that? Um, well, being that a lot of my friends who were starting off as bisexual, they use it as a mild stepping stone because they wanted to, they've never played around with the same sex. And so because they never played around with the same sex or they haven't played with the opposite sex, if they find it or they view it that it's easier for them to come out as bisexual, figure out what they want to do with themselves, where they want to see, where they want to perceive the, their lifestyle. And then they go from there by then using that mild stepping stone as a bisexual male or female, uh, trans or not, uh, to go ahead and go into what they feel more comfortable in being either a lesbian or a, a gay male or lesbian female. Um, but it's all really that simple milestone because it's easier to come out as a bisexual person Mm -hmm. and which is totally like now that bisexuality is a thing, people using it as a milestone is kind of frowned upon because it's like, Hey, if you're, if you're comfortable in your own skin being with the same sex partner, then just do that. Don't use bisexuality as a milestone to just make sure that people understand that you're okay with your sexuality after the fact that you've already come out as a different sexuality. Gotcha. Now, I'm not sure if you would know anything about this, but what is it with uh, bisexually not being accepted uh, so much, you know, like in the early year 2000s, things like that? If you would have an opinion about when bisexuality came out as the thing to be finally. Well, I got a little bit of history on that. Um, So bisexuality has actually been around for pretty much decades um there's a lot of actual famous people that we know nowadays because of like there's not only their sexuality but because they've they've been really important in our like actual history of men like frida frida Kahlo. she is a mexican mexican painter who in her lifetime she's actually had both male and female partners um a lot of good writers and poets like uh walt whitman the Mm -hmm. american writer he actually did uh oh captain my captain uh he was known as a bisexual male so it it, there's a lot of history in knowing that it's been out there for ages it's just that because in the early 2000s when people were using it as a mild stepping stone to like get across as gay or uh, gay or uh, lesbian it kind of was viewed as an a non-sexual sexuality because you're just a non-sexual sexuality sexuality. like a the concept of it is like you're using the bisexual to get to where you want to go. And so mm. in the early 2000s, it was kind of viewed as in like, oh, it's not an actual real thing. It's kind of like a gay guy's coming out as bi because he wants to mess around with girls and see what it goes from there. Or a female coming out as a bi female to see if she actually likes to make out with girls when she's not drunk. Not, not putting out all the drunk women make out with their gay friends. <laughs> I'm just saying 
it's the idea that hey women and men do certain things when they're intoxicated because they have a alibi they have their escape go i hate that thank you god i really hate that if you if you enjoy something then just fucking do it yeah who gives a shit what anybody says but see, not a lot of people are open-minded like that. They just view it as in like, oh, because of today's society, it's like you can't do something without the repercussions. Well, you got to deal with what you want to be with. Like, if mm-hmm. you want to be a gay male, be gay, be happy, love yourself. If you're going to be a gay female, lesbian, go for it. Make sure that you're happy. That's where the that's where it comes down to it. If you're happy with what you are, you don't have to expect what other people say or think to make you feel a little bit better about yourself. Yeah. It took me years to finally get over that bridge because it was constantly like, I didn't feel right. I wasn't okay with my sexuality. I felt that something was wrong, but finding that eventually people were okay with me being bisexual. It was a little bit more understanding that I can be happy for myself, not be happy for what other people expect of me. Okay. I, I have a question. Yes. Um, have you found that men, try to date you because they how do i word this they think it's safe <laughs> say, say it. yeah they think it's safe they want to try it out they want to use you as their experimental date mandate first well, mandate oh i wish the listeners could see his smile well <laughs> lala, lala just thank you for bringing that up so men that are trying to experiment with their sexuality view me as kind of a milestone and a stepping stone milestone it's great but you guys gotta understand that i as a bisexual cis male still have emotions so being used is fucked up yeah that sucks go for it i'm curious um i'm curious are you biking uh, <laughs> hey. no i'm 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 99.999% certain that I don't want to touch a penis. It's just not my cup of tea. But I I am curious. um, Has anybody ever come out and said, hey, I'm curious about this. Would you be willing to do this? Uh, And would that affect how your reaction comes up? Well, if someone is more along the lines of direct and Mm -hmm. actually asking specifically, hey, I want to try this out. It is not 100% certain that this is what it's going to be or what I'm going to like. I take it as in, okay. I can be that patient person because a lot of people that don't know someone that is a top or a dom uh, or pretty much specifically a top, both for the female and male aspects, they kind of view it as like, oh, you just do what you need to do and you get it over with. No, it comes with a lot of patience. It comes with a lot of time. You can't literally just jam your (laughs) male anatomy into a male anatomy because there is no preparation there is no lubrication there is nothing you can actually tear someone Mm -hmm. you can cause them to actually like pretty much bleed yeah thanks and it's like not very healthy so for answering your question lala for someone that's like hey i want to try i am totally down for it i patient i've been around the block several times i've tried doing the service and being serviced and kind of been around the block enough to be like i can be patient i can understand and it's fun to an extent, but then, like I said, I am human. I do have emotions. It kind of sucks after someone uses you and tosses you aside like a used paper towel or a tissue. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of like being in a meat factory and just throwing away the good parts because you think they're kind of like screwed up. So oh. you've been in the situation and you you are you were aware of it or not until after the until fact. after. So that's why when we had Greedy clarify um, a little bit more in like the trying aspect, Mm -hmm. it was the concept that it's nice to know preemptively that, hey, I would like to try. It's not my cup of tea. Is it okay with you? I am totally okay with that as long as you make that your your forefront of like, hey, we're going to talk about it. We're going to address it. It might not be my cup of tea. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm okay with that as long as there is no emotion involved because, hey, rather be safe than sorry. Consent is always key. And letting them know, hey, if you're not going to want to be intimate after this or you want to be partners after this, it'd rather you tell me now instead of me catching feelings and then getting hurt in the long run. Right. Smart. That was, that was informative. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was very nice. Thank you. Hey, we had some alphabet soup. We yeah. had alphabet soup. Okay. Thank you so much for that. That was very educational. We will. I I, I feel smarter now. 
How about you, Lala? I do. I, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you, Greedy? I definitely learned a few things out of that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. well, you guys are totally welcome. I do appreciate you guys having me on the show. Uh, I actually am a listener, so... No, we Thank appreciate you. you being here and answering mm. these awkward questions. That... Oh, I'm totally for it. You guys can ask certain questions <laughs> after the show as well. It's totally fine. Mm. Right. Hey, Lala. Hey. I think we got to the point of the draw pickup. The draw pickup, and he's talking to me because... This is a one-sided, <laughs> a one-sider. This is the one side that was sent to uh, a male in our Discord. Ooh. Yeah, who, who sent it to us. All when right. I read this, I cringed. <laughs> as, as some of the gay people in the community would say, ooh, spill the tea, honey, spill the tea. <laughs> <laughs> so this was sent to uh, Papanoff, I believe? Uh-huh. Yeah, from, yeah, oh, yes, it was sent to Papanoff, yes. Sent to Papanoff. By a woman that he dated years ago. Now, are you talking about like years of like more than a couple? More than or, more than two years ago. Like I believe it was what five or six. He I want to say he said six. Not responded to a text message from her for six years, oh. and every day he gets. I I, I want to say he said hundreds of texts. Oh no! Oh, and this wow. is just one screenshot example of what he goes through every day this shit is gold on the stalker levels <laughs> this is this is like tier one stalker all right greedy let's hush hushing all right <clears throat> i've been doing this one for two days if you are, e- are each starting to feel it smirks sucks to be him being he's out with jerry working an event and can't get near me i'm so mean what's really mean is because it's in front of lots of people, and he won't be back until tomorrow night. He likes that I mean, though. It's okay. I think you do, too, and I like to be punished. What do you each think of my ingredient list? Tell me. Kisses slow and smirks. Who asked who he works for? Runs her fingers down your chest. Are you okay? Kisses slow, swishing inching closer the end <laughs> <laughs> the fact oh. that he hasn't replied to any of this in six years you'd think that she might pick that up as a clue i mean even i, I I'm, I'm pretty dense when it comes to signals even i would pick that up as hey this person doesn't want to talk to me anymore and to be fair, I put a little punctuation in there just because otherwise it's so oh, hard to read. Have, uh. I know. Well, guys, otherwise it reads like this. Tell me kisses slow smirks. Right? There's no pu- There's no pause. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Runs your fingers down your chest. You okay? Kisses slow, swishing, inching closer. It's all one sentence. <laughs> hey, Jar. Hashtag yes. grammar. Have you, received, have you received a drop pickup in your life? A drop pickup. Well, there's 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 a couple that I've had, um, but the most recent ones were from a pup on the actual Fet Life, who was in Germany. I'm not gonna give out names, not information. Who was straight up just like we should pause, literally just like ellipses. We should ellipses, and um, totally pup play. I was like you know i'm a pup right he's like yes let us play simple just straightforward to the point let's just go ahead and do it i'm like i don't have a sexual pup yet i don't know what to tell you i'm sorry (laughs) (sighs) people are dumb uh more along the lines of they're always interested to see what they can get out of someone Mm. a rise or a fall Hmm. i agree yeah i'm looking over at our guest I think that card is filled out. I think that card is filled out. Yes, it is. Is that card filled out? Yes, it is. So um, let's say Donald Trump gets his jollies from. Hey, you don't play with ice cubes. It's a nice chill. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. Have you ever done that? Uh, Yes, it actually is. That is is pretty fun. it, It is. It's a good way to actually make sure that the muscles actually actually loosen up um because of the constant like insertion it ice cubes being inserted can be left in there because they'll melt and then you'll be fine you literally it stretches and then it's totally fun i would think it would 
give you a freezer burn. Well, like, you don't you don't want to pull it directly out of the freezer. You kind of just want to like let them sit let out for a, a second. Melty and, yeah, hmm. you know, liquid and then. Yeah. All right then. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a great episode, kids. <laughs> right. uh, I I do have one more thing that I would like to uh, drop into the show. Yeah. Um, I, I know it's a bit of a last second thing, but um, there is a Kickstarter that I have backed, and I hope other people will back it as well. Uh, Trial by Trolley by the creators of Cards Against Humanity. What is Trial by Trolley? Or not Cards Against Humanity. Uh, Cyanide and Happiness. Wow. Okay, I was about to say, like, okay. Cyanide so, and Happiness. So, nice. so, so tell us. What trial, is trial by, by Trolley trial? is a card game that requires at least three people. Okay? Um, let's say person A and person B each select a card from their hand. Um, and person person C has to choose the lesser of two evils but there is no lesser of the two evils. Oh. Okay. So this trolley that person C is the conductor of is going to take track A or track B. Track A, let's just say, is um, stocked with 300 kittens in a box. Track B is the Mormon, Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And You have to justify what your decision is. Oh, my God. On the idea of... You're going to kill it. somebody. Got it. Oh, okay. your, your Got train it. is going to mow down either those kittens or that choir. Yeah, you don't have a choice. Mm. Hey, that reminds me of an episode from The Good Life. From The Good Life. Yeah. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> happy tree friends, anybody? Happy what? Oh, happy tree friends. Happy tree friends. Happy tree friends. Oh, happy yeah. Tree friends. I have no idea. Oh, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Lala. We, shall we are going you. to introduce you to so many things. So, oh, yes. yeah, you just gave me blank stares, and now I'm giving you blank stares. Yup, yup. <laughs> Weird. So this time, hey Jar, any final thoughts? Uh, any final thoughts on today's episode? Um, other... Just in general, what you got? Well, in general, just be safe. Make sure that you're consenting to a lot of things when it comes to actual play. Not only that, making sure that if you do play and you're playing like with rando randos, um, aka grinder, uh, other <laughs> known associated um, <laughs> online applications that are for like just flings and good times, um, always make sure you're testing. Uh, it, it, making sure that hey, if you're straight up talking to someone, even if it's a one-time thing, ask questions. Don't be scared to be like, okay, well, when was the last time you got tested? No. You want to make sure that you're safe for you because no one else is going to look after you other than yourself. And if you got partners, if you have play partners, making sure that you're safe not only for yourself but for them as well. Because, hey, rather be safe and clean than guessing and then trying to figure it out later. Because medical bills are expensive, y'all. Medical bills are expensive. <laughs> yeah. All right. Greedy, final thoughts? <sighs> I'm I'm just I'm I'm very happy that we actually sat down and recorded an episode. It, it's 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 been an itch that I've needed to scratch for a little bit. Greedy? I feel like I've been deprived. I, I my my work schedule is getting in the way of my podcasting. Ah, mm. well, we do need money. Yeah, hint hint. <clears throat> huh, patrons, patrons. Um, <laughs> dollar, where do I sign up? Shameless dollar, dollar a month. <laughs> hey, patrons. That would be awesome if we could get to a point where, you know, we can put in full-time work schedules on the podcast. That would be I, I think our, our quality would go drastically up, our content would go up, and we'd be able to afford to, say, go to different conventions and stuff. Adult meet, conventions, meet and nerdy conventions. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that anyways. Do some in the field work. That'll just help. Say so invite. It will. Invite. Be I don't want to say better, but more known um, kink and nerdy uh, people, dude, Will Wheaton. Wow, I don't know. Tabletop. Wheaton. I don't know. Tabletop. I don't know if Wheaton would come on our show. <laughs> oh, I don't I'm, think so either. I'm but... starting the campaign. I I want to get Kevin Smith to Twitter. <gasps> okay, dude. we'll get them both. <laughs> Same episode. <laughs> hey, Kevin Smith. Will Wheaton's coming on to our show. <laughs> You're gonna be here. <laughs> hey, Will Wheaton. We've already got Kevin Smith committed. Get over here. Wow. <laughs> nice. Anyway, <laughs> Lala. Yeah, my final thoughts. I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. Uh, word of the day, Dom ass. D -O -M -A -S -S. Why? Because you need to put it on Discord because I just received a gift 
to go for the giveaway. It is a. Should I say what it is? No. 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 Ooh. Well, oh. Well, it's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a grab bag, and so. Oh yeah. Well, not a grab, but a. Um, um, but I believe we're gonna do the words. drawing at the Luau next weekend. Nice. So this I coming Saturday. That is it. So this this episode is the last chance to get into this drawing. Right. So make sure you do your uh, shoot in, us a text inputs or a phone call. Call uh, Candy Sweetbox, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Once again, that actual key word is dome ass. D O M A S S. Dom. Dom ass. Dom. Uh, <laughs> Don't uh, be a dumb ass, kids. Yep. Captain Awesome, yeah. any yeah. final thoughts? Final thoughts for me, as I just said, don't be a dumb ass. Um, when you're having a scene, pay attention to what you're doing. Be sure to remember everything you talked about as best you can, and just do your best. Um, and <laughs> I say it all the time, but I did it. I broke a toy and now not coming back. Well, unfortunate, but learn your lesson and improve yourself from there. That's the plan. Uh, it's time for some internet porn. <laughs> wow. Girl on, girl on, girl on, girl on, girl on, guy on sheep. Thanks for leaving me llama out of it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, don't oh. look at his little bum. Leave his bum alone. Okay, <laughs> listeners, uh, this is going to a bad place. We are out. You are dirty, dirty, fresh and nerdy.